the murder of the Russian royal family. The fate of the Princess Anastasia. It's one of the greatest unsolved puzzles of the 20th century. Did the Romanov children survive the firing squad? Now a new discovery could bring the mystery to an end. A grave has been uncovered. But are these the remains of Russia's missing royal children? From cutting-edge forensic science to secret Soviet archives, an exhaustive investigation aims to solve an enduring mystery. What really happened to Anastasia? An international team of forensic experts is flying in to the scene of a 90-year-old crime in a far-flung Siberian forest, including a leading forensic anthropologist and veteran of the 9-11 investigation, Anthony Falsetti. It's really vast out here, so desolate, so far away from civilization, but that's where two bodies are supposed to be. It's another case of huge significance, especially for Russia. The remains of long-lost members of its royal family may have been found at last, but nobody knows for sure. The truth of what happened to the Romanovs has long been blurred by myth and legend. Did the royal line of Russia end in a violent murder, or did an heir to the throne escape and survive? The investigation team also includes Dr. Michael Koble, a leading forensic DNA expert who works for the Pentagon, identifying the remains of American soldiers. With the American military's laboratories at his full disposal, he'll attempt to put names to these mystery bones. The team is headed into a remote forest, 20 kilometers outside the Siberian city of Yekaterinburg. This far-flung industrial outpost is where the fate of Russia's royal family was written. Five children, born into royalty. The Grand Duchesses Olga and Tatiana, the flower of young womanhood. Maria and Anastasia are beguiling teenagers. 13-year-old Crown Prince Alexei is the boy born to be king. Millions of loyal Russians revere them, even worship them. A divine family set on earth to rule the nation. But the Romanov line would end with them. 1917, the Russian Revolution. In its wake, a civil war raged. The Bolsheviks against the Tsarist loyalists. The royal family was imprisoned, exiled to Siberia, under house arrest in Yekaterinburg. But their popularity among the masses presented a problem for the fledgling Soviet administration. The Bolshevik leadership planned a show trial and execution for the Tsar. Perhaps wary of a populist backlash, some accounts say Lenin wanted the rest of the family kept alive as political pawns. The royal family was dumped one and a half thousand kilometers away from Moscow, on the unstable fringes of the new Soviet state. Much of the country was still divided in civil war. In July 1918, the Yekaterinburg Reds feared that a Czech army and white Russian forces were on their way to rescue the Tsar. A decision was made to act. Yakov Yurovsky was the hardliner chosen by the local committee to take over command of the House of Exile, where the Tsar and his family were being held. Guards known to have become sympathetic towards the Romanovs were removed. Yurovsky brought in new men with a new mission, to execute the prisoners. 
in the cellar of this house, in 20 bloody minutes on the night of July the 17th, 1918, the lifeblood of Tsarist Russia was suddenly and shockingly snuffed out. Just after midnight, the new guards roused the royals from their sleep. The family was told that anarchist unrest in the town meant that the upper rooms of the house, vulnerable to any shooting in the streets, had become unsafe. The royal household, the Tsar, his wife and five children and their four attendants, were brought down into the cellar for their own safety. The Soviet commander, Yakov Yurovsky, led his men into the room. He allotted each man a specific family member to target. They were to be shot in the heart to limit the blood flow. Written accounts of what exactly happened that night are detailed and confusing, but the savagery and slaughter would be beyond doubt. As the smoke cleared, the myth began. Could anyone really have escaped this carnage? The bones now found in the Kopchiaki forest may finally provide a definitive answer to this intriguing question. Separating fact from fiction in a case that has captivated popular imagination has proven virtually impossible. But this latest discovery may provide critical evidence that's eluded investigators for decades. Vital clues, hidden in a Siberian forest for almost 90 years. From here, forensic anthropologist Dr. Anthony Falsetti and the investigative team have to complete their journey on foot to meet the men who may have made a stunning historical find. So, no. what did you find? Where did you find it? How deep was the burial? The remains have been moved to a morgue for safekeeping. What else did you find with it? Any artifacts? What I'm hearing from these archaeologists is they have bones, maybe some projectiles. What we don't have is any evidence of a really controlled excavation, and it's quite frankly making me nervous. So far, there's not much to go on. There's no evidence of the crime scene and scant documentation to support the find. The Romanov case has been plagued by hoaxes and cover-ups over the years, and this latest find may be no different. In the days after the murders, newspapers reported only that the Tsar had been killed. For eight years, the Soviet state maintained that the rest of the royal family was alive and well. But the cover-up failed, forcing the Russian government to change its story and make a shocking admission. All 11 members of the royal household had been executed. Then came reported sightings of Prince Alexei and Princess Anastasia. Were the children dead or alive? Sensational rumors kept emerging. In Moscow, there was unease about the exact fate of the Romanovs. An imposter claiming to be Alexei was officially investigated. Years pass. Under Stalin's iron rule, it was forbidden to even mention the royal family. In the 1950s, a member of the original firing squad surfaced in the United States. Austrian Rudolf Lacker claimed he had been left to guard a truck carrying the royal bodies. When he got stuck in the mud in the middle of a forest, he said he helped a wounded Anastasia escape. The Romanov legend and rumors of a surviving heir were revived. After the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, local academics armed with shovels and vital information ventured into the Koptiaki forest to dig. 